even through all those other ex exterior factors, he still played hard. He still was a great teammate and, and was really nice and, and uh, you know, pushed me to help make me better and, and uh, all around fantastic teammate. What's up, FCD fans? Welcome to another episode of the DTID podcast. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest. He is a three-time MLS Cup champion, a two-time Supporters Shield winner, a Liga MX champion, a CONCACAF Gold Cup champion twice, a CONCACAF Champions League champion, a College Cup champion. He is Omar Gonzalez. Omar, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me on. You have a lot of accolades, man. A great career. <laughs> It's been a wonderful career, and uh, hopefully it keeps going for a little bit longer. <laughs> Absolutely. So you're also a Dallas native, one of the, the, one of the few Dallasites in the squad. Um, you know, where exactly are you from, and how did you get into soccer originally? So I am originally from Oak Cliff, Texas. Um, it's about 10 minutes south of downtown. And I started playing rec league right there at Keese Park um, at four years old. And my parents just uh, signed me up for a team. I'm the youngest of four, and so all, all my siblings played, um, and I was the last one to join. So I know you did play for the Dallas Texans, like the youth club. Um, how did you get involved with them, and, and how was that part of your career? The way that I got involved with Dallas Texans was, um, you know, it just came to a point where I think I was turning, I was going to be turning 11 soon, and, and uh, a couple of my teammates from my, from my rec team um, were going to go try out. And one of the dads uh, asked me to join, you know. And um, so I said, all right, I'll come with you guys. But in all honesty, I wanted to just stay with my rec team and just, just, just kick it with them because that was good, right? We were a good team. We were having fun. And, and uh, so I went to the tryouts, made the team. Um, and the funny thing was that my, my friends who took me, uh, they didn't make the team, but I made the team. And... Uh, and so then the coach called my mom and, and, you know, they wanted me to come back. But, uh, you know, it's club soccer is expensive. And and so, you know, we didn't know if, if we were if we were going to be able to cover the fees. And so uh, I, I ended up getting, a, you know, a full scholarship. Uh, one of my teammates from Texans uh, paid for me to play. And, and uh, that's how I got my start. So I know you played in the Dallas Cup and you did well. Is that was that with the Texans as well? In what years? How'd that go? Yeah, that was. So, I mean, I, I played Dallas Cup since I was, uh, I, I think, first year you could start, it was like 11 years old, right? First year with Texans. And I think at that tournament, um, Giovanni Dos Santos was there too with a team from Monterey, and he killed it. He, he, he must have scored like 40 goals, I swear. Like every game was like five goals. He was just chipping from everywhere. And so, like, that was my first year there. And, I think right after that tournament, he went over to Barcelona, and so that was, like, incredible. Um, but then uh, uh, we ended up winning Supergroup when, after my time with the U.S. men's national team and, and uh, the, the youth team, the U-17, and playing in the World Cup. Coming back home, I started playing with the 88s, with the 88 Texans, and, and that's who we won uh, Supergroup with. Nice. First team, you know, i got to say, first, first, first American team okay. to win Supergroup. I know you guys like to rep the Dallas team that did it, but uh, got to tell Jesus and Paxton and all these guys that you did it first. I did it first. That's what <laughs> you mentioned the Gio dos Santos. That's such cool because like the Dallas Cup in general is such a big international tournament that if you look back at pictures, you see like I think Wayne Rooney played in it for Everton. Um, there's a picture of Paxton playing against Saka from Arsenal. Wow, when they're yeah. both like Saka must have been playing way up. Um, but that, that's such a cool tournament. Um, so you were with Texans for most of your youth career, but I know that there's photos of you training in an FC Dallas kit on Field One, um, yeah. probably 05, 06. What's that story? So that was after, um, so my time training with FC Dallas was after I finished with the U.S. men's national team in Florida. I moved home, and I had already committed to the University of Maryland. And so I had a few months to burn because I graduated in December in Florida. And then I came home, and I was working at Inwood uh, uh, as like working the clock, you know, okay. for like the indoor facility, uh, which is, I don't think is around anymore. So I don't, no one knows about it anymore, but, uh, I've heard of uh it, for sure. it was great. It was, it, it, it was a great place to play. And, um, and so I was working there and training and playing with Texans and, and, uh, 
I asked to train with FC Dallas, and so I got the opportunity to to come and train with the first team, and it was an amazing ex experience, and and a lot of. Uh, you know, just vets from that time and got to be around them and in the locker room, and it was uh, incredible. Was there any talk of, like, signing for the club at that age? I know it was a lot more rare back then to sign you know, players in their teens. You know, typically back then it was, like, college was a must. Uh, but was there any talk of that at all? No, there there was no talk about that. But, uh, yeah, there were only a few players that signed early, and I think that was, like, Cuevas Kirk, Nick Basanya from my class. Uh, Nick Basanya went to Salt Lake. Cuevas Kirk went to Galaxy. Um, Josie Altador, uh, he went to Red Bull, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. or Metro Stars. I don't know what they yeah, were at the time. I think early Red Bull was still. Yeah. Same. And so, you know, not many players did it. And so my path was going to college, and, and uh, it's probably for the best. I needed to grow up a little bit, and, and uh, it was a good place to grow up. How'd you end up at Maryland, University of Maryland? Uh, the way that I ended up at the University of Maryland was. Um, you know, I was just, I got all the the opportunities from schools by being with the national team. And so mm -hmm. um, that created a, a lot of buzz. Um, and so I was, like, I was talking to Rutgers and uh, I think like uh, UVA, Maryland. And, and um, I had a couple buddies from Dallas that had already committed to University of Maryland. Uh, Justin Kendro and Josh Mikhailovich, who I played with on Texans, and then also my my roommate from the U.S. Men's, the U-17s, was Jeremy Hall, and he was going too. So I didn't see the school, um, nothing. The the coach actually flew down. Sasha Swarovski flew down to my parents' house, and we had a meeting and everything. And so it was, you know, recruited well, and and uh, so I didn't even need to go to the school to see it. I felt comfortable with my friends that were going there and uh, great, great soccer school, great academic school. And so I just felt it was right. And so I committed and decided to go. And the Rutgers coach wasn't very happy. He called oh, really? me. He was like, what are you doing? You didn't even see the school. Oh, wow. you, know, <laughs> you know, he was ripping me a new one, but I didn't care. I was... Uh, I was excited to go to Maryland. And it worked out. You guys won the College Cup in 08. That's uh, right. How was that experience, and how was your overall collegiate experience? Um, my overall collegiate experience, I loved it. I loved, uh, you know, like anyone who's ever gone to college, I think is <laughs> some of the best, best years of their life and, and uh, made some lifelong friends, uh, enjoyed life outside of school and soccer. And, and um, I think... For being a college experience, it was still a professional environment. That's the way that Maryland was and is and the way Sasho approaches it and and um, just really good people. And I think that's who Sasha Swarovski tries to bring in is just like really good people. And so um, my teammates were awesome. They helped me, um, made mistakes here and there, but but I was, you know, guided and, and, and helped along the way and, and we were good. We had a really good roster. I mean, if you look at our roster from Maryland, the amount of guys that went professional to MLS and also played in a couple World Cups and some gone to play in, in Europe, I mean, we were pretty stacked. And so it was a great environment to be a part of, and I think it helped me tremendously and helped me get ready for MLS. What was it like getting ready for the MLS Super Draft? Was that, like, always your goal going through? Yeah, my goal was always to turn pro. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, to get ready for the super draft, not much needed to be done because we had just one here at, uh, what was then, what was the stadium called back then? It was uh, P uh, Pizza Hut Park. Back when it was Pizza Hut Park, uh, we won the 08, uh, NCAA title here, oh, wow. uh, which was amazing. And, and, um, so right after that, you know, we had won. I was like, I'm done. I want to go pro. And, and I knew that I was going to go pretty high. So, so I went down to Florida to do, uh, the, the combine. I didn't play in all the games and, um, and I ended up going number three in the draft. So it was, uh, it was pretty amazing to say the least. Yeah. Number three to the LA galaxy. Um, and I believe at that time, Donovan and Beckham were already there. Yeah. Um, what was it like kind of hearing that you're about to join a team with, with those guys and there's other great players on that team, MLS legends and national team players? What was it like hearing that it was the Galaxy, probably the biggest team in MLS back then? Yeah, no, Galaxy definitely was and, and, and still is. 
you know, what one of the top teams with most MLS cups. And so um, when they selected me at number three, I was just over the moon. And what made it even better was the fact that I was going with uh, my college teammate, AJ De La Garza. And just like when I made the choice to go to Maryland, you know, to have people that I knew were already going, I felt comfortable. And to have AJ getting drafted there as well. I, I was super excited. The fact that we were both going to be there. I had someone I already knew and, and to be on a team with superstars who have had long careers and, and, and world famous athletes and, you know, icon and David Beckham. I mean, it's just incredible. And so I was just excited to, to go there, to be a sponge, to learn as much as I could and, and hopefully make an impact. What's Beckham like as a teammate? Because I think at that point he was probably like, if not the most famous person in the world, one of them. What, what was it like meeting him and playing with him? Uh, the first time he walked into the room, I was a bit, I, I was definitely starstruck. Me and AJ De Garza just kind of looked at each other <laughs> and just like, oh wow, and uh, uh, it was awesome. And and he was a great teammate, um, just super, just professional guy, especially, you know he just had so much on his plate and he was getting pulled in every direction doing media and he he was the face of the league and yeah. and the league expected so much from him LA Galaxy expected so much of him also he was trying to still make the world cup team and so he was pushing himself to to train as hard as he could and and so he just had so much going on but even through all those other ex, exterior factors he still played hard he still was a great teammate and and was really nice and and uh you know pushed me to help make me better and and uh all around fantastic teammate incredible person and um funny story like one day because you know i was uh you know i had uh at that moment like champagne taste with beer money you know <laughs> i was just watching all these vets and who had a lot of money and doing nice things and wearing nice clothes and and going to nice restaurants, and I was just trying to keep up with the Joneses and and trying to copy and emulate all everything these guys were doing on the field and off the field, yeah, yeah. right? And so, you know, uh, I, I I booked a reservation to go eat at this fried chicken night bouchon in Beverly Hills, and I was talking to Beckham in the morning about it and excited, and he's like, "All right, cool," and it was just just a simple conversation, right? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, later that night, I'm there with, with my now wife and friends, and, we're, and we finished the dinner, have dessert and everything, and I asked for the check, and all of a sudden, no, it's been paid for by David Beckham. Oh, really? So just awesome. from that, that, that morning conversation, mm -hmm. he just took that in and took the time to call in and pay for the wow. whole dinner. And it was just, like, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, will always stick with me, just what kind of person he is and, and how thoughtful he can be and... And it made me feel amazing. And just the yeah. fact that this, this, you know, famous guy in the world can just yeah. do that for someone. That's awesome. That's a great story. Um, Y'all did really well on the field, too. First in the West, reached the MLS Cup final, and you got the Rookie of the Year. Um, what was it like, you know, your first season went about as good as it possibly could. Um, how were you feeling then one year in? Oh, I was flying. Uh, like you said, it was an incredible year, the Rookie of the Year, making it to the final. And... And uh, I think that year we won a lot of games like 1-0. And mm -hmm. just so I think the year before they were the Galaxy was the worst defense. Yep. And so to come in and, and, and make an impact and, and help the team to reach the final was, uh, was incredible. And, you know, unfortunately we lost in the final against a good Salt Lake team. And, and, uh, but we learned a lot from that moment and, and, Ultimately, I think two years later, we ended up winning it. So learned a lot from that. You mentioned that two years later, 2011 MLS Cup winners. You also won the Supporters' Shield that year. Mm -hmm. Looking back, is that probably like the, the best season in your club career, you think? I would say 2011 has to be, yeah. Being Supporters' Shield winner and MLS Cup winner is, is, is hard to do. And, and, um, and definitely... We were just untouchable that year, mm -hmm. and, and definitely one of the one of the best years in my career, for sure. Um, 
a little while later, you did go on loan to, to Nuremberg in Germany. Um, so the Europe, next year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, German experience, European experience. But you ended up tearing your ACL while you were there and then coming back. What was that experience like going to Germany but then having like a, a really tough setback injury-wise? <laughs> well, it wasn't that much of an experience. Uh, I never stepped foot in Germany. Oh, wow. Okay. It was, a, it was in a preseason in the winter um, in Belek, Turkey. Okay. And it was the first training session. So, oh, no. so uh, uh, the funny thing about that was, you know, it was really hard to get to Europe, you know, back mm-hmm. back then. And, and it's not as easy as it is now for young players to just get signed before yeah. even playing an MLS game. You know, it, now it's really it, uh, the pathway is there. Mm-hmm. And before it was you had to have 75 percent uh caps for the u.s men's national team that year and 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 so like there were so many hoops you had to had to get through and just to be able to get your permit and so um you know the fact that i i i got the loan i was super excited and when i get to germany or to turkey to train with the team you know you hold europe in such high regard and you think they're just levels and levels above you but in that moment, I was training and I was like looking at these guys like these guys aren't that much faster. They aren't that much better. They aren't, you know, they're just normal, you know. And so I had this thought in my head and I was like, man, I'm going to kill it here. Like, hmm. like I'm going to do great here. And then a few minutes later, ACL. And uh, then I was on a plane back home and ACL surgery. And that was in January from, yeah. of 2012. And then uh, I heard on another podcast that you came back within five months from that to yeah. get back for the Galaxy, um, who hadn't started well, but you came back. Like, how is that even possible? I think that's the quickest I've ever heard of <laughs> someone coming back from an ACL. Well, it was, I came back and played, I think, like in five and a half, you know, close to six months. But yeah, Galaxy were in last place. We were in, we were in last place in the conference, and I came back, and, and uh, we started to hit a stride and, and squeaked into the playoffs, and making it to another MLS Cup final, got to host it again, and uh, ended up being MLS Cup MVP that year. Yeah, you scored in the game. Yeah, right? I, yeah. I scored a header in the game, and uh, that was just, you know, fairy tale moment, just the hardships in the beginning of the year, working super hard to get myself back and helping the team uh, reach another MLS Cup and ultimately winning it was, you know, the icing on the cake. And, you know, because when you have an injury, um think will you ever be the same will you ever come back you know will I win my position back what will I look like will I be fast enough you know so many questions and the fact that I was able to get back as fast as I did and and then win another MLS Cup was insane tough to get better than that um, a few years later, though, you do go abroad again, this time permanently, uh, to Pachuca in, in Mexico. How did that move come about, and what was your experience down there? The way the um, Pachuca move happened was, uh, well, I was a, I was a, a DP for mm-hmm. Galaxy, um, you know, and uh, I think I was the first American DP. First center back DP. First okay. center yeah, back first DP. Center back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Rafa Marquez, but, you know. He's it's a coming legend, back from Barca you know. Or something, yeah, so. yeah, coming from Barca. But uh, um, yeah, I was a DP. I had a no trade clause. Uh, you know, we already had three DPs on Galaxy, but they wanted to make way for Giovanni dos Santos. Mm. And so then, you know, Chris Klein comes in. He's like, "Well, you know, we want to buy your contract done, or we want you to, we want you to sign a new contract." You know, I was like, "Well, I have this guaranteed. I have a no trade." Yeah. You know, I don't want to terms probably. Like, I don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah. He's like, well, you're not going to be here. Like, wow. so basically I said, uh, you know, I was this close to taking the, the pay cut and just like extending my contract. And I just had yeah. a baby. But then I was like, what am I doing? And, and um, then the, the this offer comes in from Mexico and same money, but I'm paying net. So it's like I'm getting paid double. And and so um, easy choice, new challenge. And I make the move. Yeah. And they, um, you're unveiling. You're in a Darth Vader costume, and <laughs> yeah. we'll show it. But how does that happen? Like, it's so, it seems so random to me. Trust me, it wasn't my idea. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Uh, the way that came about was, you know, talking about Beckham, you know, how fashionable he was. I mean, you know, I've, I've seen him do press conferences, and he was all dapper mm-hmm. in suits, and he looks good. And so that's what I wanted to do, yeah. right? I wanted to, you know, 
copy him and I had a suit on and I was ready. I signed my contract. I was ready to, I was ready to do the announcement. And then the owner comes who, who just, you know, gave me this great contract. And he's like, I have this idea. I already got permission from Disney that we can do this. And, and, and you're going to wear a Darth Vader costume. And I'm like, you know, I have this suit on, I look nice. And, but he's paying me all this money. I just signed the contract and, <laughs> I was like, all right, let's do it. Okay. And then that's the rest is history. I, I come out next to Chewbacca, some stormtroopers, and and uh, I'm, I'm Darth Vader. You're Darth Vader. <laughs> well, certainly a, a unique uh, unveiling story. Um, but what's it like playing in Liga MX? Um, you know, obviously it's like the, the biggest league in that country, so a lot of pressure. Pachuca is a huge club. You know, what's it like being under that magnifying glass? Mexico was incredible. I absolutely love my experience, the passion, everything that, how tough the league is, the schedule is crazy. I remember my first, uh, you know, month there, maybe more than a month, we didn't have a day off. Mm. I mean, you hear in MLS, you have bargaining agreement, you, yeah. you have to have a, a day off a week or, you know, down there it was no days off because mm -hmm. we had Copa and we had league games and it was a game like every, like, two games a week or something for like the whole month and we just kept coming in and it was just different it was yeah. different I had to adapt and and um but that was the challenge that I that I wanted mm -hmm. and and so going there and getting this new experience and and playing with all these amazing players and and how technical and how physical how fast and how spread out the game can be mm -hmm. uh huge learning moments for me and and again, like, you know, Galaxy doesn't want me anymore because they want to bring someone else in and, and they sort of push me out the door. But here's this new opportunity with Pachuca and we end up winning, winning the league that, mm -hmm. that season. So another great moment in my career and, and huge challenge. And we beat Monterrey in the final, which is a huge club in Mexico. Yeah. So Pachuca for, has a storied history, mm -hmm. you know, like the oldest club in Mexico and 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 tons of championships and 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 the and the early 2000s and things like that but but you know smaller team okay huge history smaller team compared to Monterey right a lot of lot of lot of money and so the fact that we beat them in the final was was amazing you won the league there and you also won the CONCACAF Champions League in 2017 beating FC Dallas um, in route in the semifinal what's it like winning that tournament because it really is the biggest prize for a North American club yeah, winning winning Champions League here was uh, insane because I'd, I'd been in the tournament with Galaxy and we would always get beat by Mexican clubs. And, and uh, um, I think, you know, no American had won it yet, I think, and, you know, because it was always won by Mexican, Mexican clubs. Teams, yeah. and, I mean, D.C., I think, won it. But different like, iterations, so right, it's tough to say. But in but the yeah. current iteration, yeah, like no one had done it. I don't know if Hercules Gomez won it. Mm. He might have. Not sure. But, you know, so then I was on the Pachuca team when we won it, and, like, here I was creating some more history, and mm -hmm. and, and uh, it's just an amazing feeling, and especially just because, you know, the whole Galaxy thing, and that was still salty and, and still a little hurt by that. But, but um, you know, I was, I was on to bigger and better things, and, mm -hmm. and just hoisting that trophy in Pachuca was uh, beating Tigres in the final. Mm -hmm. You know, for even a big club like that, you know, they, they had never won a Champions League. And, yeah. and so to, to beat them in the final, um, super tough, super hard tournament and, and had been chasing it for years yeah. with the Galaxy and couldn't, couldn't quite get there. And so the fact that I was able to go there to Pachuca and win it, um, just, just another great moment. <laughs> <laughs> another great moment in Mexico. Um, a couple of years later, you do return to MLS Toronto FC, and then New England, and then FC Dallas. I don't mean to gloss over those parts because I mean you did great stuff up there. Another MLS Cup final. Um, but now that you're with FC Dallas, what's it like playing for your hometown club? You know, your family's down the street and everything. Yeah, being back in Dallas and and uh, having gone through all all everything that I've gone through uh, since training with the first team over in field, over on field one. Uh, you know, it's a long time. It's almost like, I don't know, like 18 years or something, yeah. right? And so um, being back as an adult with the family, um, just incredible. The fact that I get to come back 
play in front of my family, um, represent my hometown club. Mm -hmm. It's just a special feeling, and, and I'm proud to be here and really hoping we can turn this season around and, and, and really do something. And, you know, I think about that 2012 year with Galaxy. It's, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. It's just got to believe. We got to keep pushing each other and, and um, be gritty. And just don't leave anything on the table because I would love to put a, a star on this on this right right over this crest and, and, and do something for these fans because they've been here since day one. Yeah. And so um, would love to do that. For sure. Well, we covered your club career. Um, now your national team career with the, with the United States. Uh, Ten years, 52 caps, three goals. You played in the World Cup. You won two Gold Cups. I guess first off, how special is it debuting for your country? Uh, debuting for your country, um, you know, when I set out my dream to become a professional soccer player, it was here at the Cotton Bowl, and, and, and it was to, to play in a World Cup, mm -hmm. you know. So in order to play in a, in a World Cup, you got to play for your, for your national team. And so when, you, when I debuted for the U.S., you know, that was the beginning of that, of that journey, of that dream. And so um, really, really incredibly special for me because I had been a part of, a, I think, a couple of January camps, but, but didn't make the, the game day roster. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was pushing towards something, right? And it kept working and has come back stronger and, and, until finally I, I got the cap. And it was against Brazil at, at Meadowlands Stadium. It was Neymar for, Neymar's first cap, too, which was sick, and, and uh, playing against Pato and all those incredible players. And, I was looking at that yeah. squad. I was like, that's a tough one just, yeah, just to jump yeah. right into international game. Uh, no, and I was watching the highlights back the other day. The, the other night because I was doing a Sirius XM uh, show for um, the U.S.-Brazil game, and I was watching the highlights back, and I never watched it before, and I'm, like, just, like, critiquing myself. I'm like, what am, what am I doing there? i got to turn my hips. i gotta, I got to see this runner coming, you know? And, and, but it's just funny, like, just seeing myself playing against Brazil, mm -hmm. first cap, thinking what was going through my head, and I just, I don't know. I don't know what, what was going through my head, but, but – just that I was just excited and, and, and super happy. I, I, I remember Landon telling me, you know, just, just, just play like you always do. Hmm. And, and so he made it pretty simple and told me to just be yeah. chill and just play my game. How helpful was it to have Landon Donovan at the club level and then when you go to make your international debut, who's obviously the face of both teams at that point? Yeah, it helped tremendously. I mean, you know, I, didn't, I haven't talked about him much, but he was huge for me. Um, he would always send me messages before big games and say how much, how, how important I was to the group, how important I was to the team. And, and just getting those messages from the captain, from him, mm -hmm. uh, was monumental for me, my confidence, and, and, and helped me play to the best of my ability, just having him back me like that. And so he was huge for me. Unlike Donovan, you did go to the 2014 World Cup. Um, mm. What's it like playing in that tournament? Ooh, um, that that tournament. I mean, to play in a World Cup in Brazil, you know, just just the scenes were insane. You know, the passion outside the hotels and the stadium. Uh, you know, social media was starting to ramp up back then, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 so we could really get a sense of of what the country was feeling back home. And mm -hmm. I remember, um, you know, they made a note like for the for like employees to give to their bosses so they could take oh, off so they could oh, go yeah. watch the game mm -hmm. and give them a free pass to go support the team at their local bar or whatever a viewing party and so to be able to to see what was happening back home and the support that you have and to know the people and the fans that you're representing um was just an incredible feeling and and to realize my dream to you know to get to that moment and I didn't, I didn't play in the first one, but I came in as a sub against Portugal. And then I started against Germany. Germany, yeah. And then, who went on to win, right? Yeah, who, so, who, yeah. who went on to win it. And I had a great game against Germany. I think we lost, but I was, I was still proud of myself because um, before the tournament, I, I had knee surgery. And so I worked really hard to get back from that. And I made the team. And, and so that game against Germany in Manaus was like the first 90 minutes I'd had in like – two months oh wow so i mean i was a head case before mm -hmm. the game i was just like was i ready yeah. could i do this 
you know, so many doubts. Yeah. Um, but I found a way and, and, and played well. Uh, we got the result we needed to get, you know, we couldn't get blown out or anything like that. Yeah. And so, you know, we get out of the group of death and then uh, I do well enough to earn the start in, in, in the next game against Belgium. Belgium. Tim Howard won. Right? Yeah, yeah, Tim yeah, Howard yeah. played yeah. out of his mind. Do you think that 2014 World Cup was the highlight of your national team career or maybe some of the, the gold cups you won? Like looking back, you know, what, are, what are the first memories you think of when you play with the national team? Oh, that has to be number one. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's the pinnacle yep. to be on the world stage playing against the best. Um, yeah. No. I mean, winning Gold Cup was amazing, like great. But mm -hmm. I mean, talking about the World, World Cup, Cup. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Um, not too many for, more for you, Omar. We'll do some quick fire questions for you, though. You can answer this in one word or if you want to elaborate, it's all up to you. Um, MLS Cup or MLS Supporter Shield? Which one do you value more? It's MLS a bit of a discussion. Cup. Cup, for sure. Cool. Best player you've played against? Best player I've played against? Easy. Messi. Messi. <laughs> there you go. There you go. What about the best player you've played with, like low key, because you've played with like David Beckham and stuff? So, but like the one that, you know, most people wouldn't point to? Mm. I mean, Robbie Keane. He was on That's fire. Yeah. Like, he was unstoppable when he showed up to our team and just a beast mentally, just a winner and mm -hmm. just, just, yeah. Robbie Keane was on fire, yeah. What's your go to cheat meal? Go-to cheat meal? I uh, guess now that I'm back in Texas, you know, sometimes I get a chicken fried steak. There you go. <laughs> uh, what's the best atmosphere you've played in? Um, and I'm going to split this into two, like internationally, worldwide, and then the MLS stadiums. Um, I think I liked playing in Costa Rica. It was always hard to play there. The fans were crazy for international. Um, uh, Tigres had to be Tigres had to be hard stadium the fans were incredible there uh, MLS I don't know the Seattle games with the LA Seattle games were always oh, yeah. intense and, and those were always fun playing, playing there it's a loud stadium for yeah sure. um, if you didn't play soccer what do you think you would have done what would you be doing Man, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do after I'm done playing <laughs> soccer, and I just I can't figure it out, and so I don't know. <laughs> Looking back, what's your favorite trophy? You've won a lot. Favorite trophy? Champions League. Fair enough, yeah. Last one for you. The ESPN body issue photos. You yeah. just reshared them. You I just, just reshared, reshared them. them. I did, yeah. What's the story behind that? The story behind that is I just got asked to do it, and it was uh, right before the World Cup uh, during camp there in Florida, and and uh, you know when you when you get asked, you you think to yourself, damn, do I want to? You know, I want to put myself out there, yeah. and it's like hell yeah, let's do it. You know, you only live one life, and and um, why not? Yeah, and so. It was awkward to be on a set where you're the only naked guy and, and there's men and women just, you know, the staff, just like like what's behind this camera. There's there's three people behind this camera, but on the body issue, it was like 15, yeah. you know, and you just got to do the same movements over and over trying to get the right shot. And uh, it was a really fun experience. Mm -hmm. It was uh, unique and, and not many people can say that they've done it. And so... Yeah. It was a really cool experience. Do you have those photos up anywhere in your home, or just an old phone? I did. I did yeah. get. I did put that picture up on a coffee mug. You know, it's it's like black, but yeah. it's like thermo. Okay. And so, like, once it gets hot, the picture shows up. Oh wow! So, it, like, slowly as it starts getting hotter and hotter, you start seeing this picture. <laughs> what an Easter egg! And That's so, great. like, I used to uh, when like people would come over to my house, I'd. I'd, I'd, I'd serve him coffee in that cup. You know? Oh, that's awesome. And so it'd that's be awesome. black at first, and then it'd get it, and then, oh, what, what's going on? <laughs> that's awesome. Well, anybody who made it to the end of this uh, will have those photos <laughs> up as well. Omar, thank you so much for your time. We All right, thank, thank you. Awesome.